Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about big companies and preferences. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, which of these do big companies prefer? A person who is a specialist or a person who is a generalist? And the short answer is that it depends, like it always does. But usually big companies have a preference in two things and we're going to touch on that. So basically what I argue is that when you're working with, with any type of company, you will have to think about the company's position first and foremost to know what a, what a such a company is going to prefer. You see, when you're working with specialists, and now I'm talking about real specialists, I'm not talking about someone who does a little bit more, I don't know, CSS than other people. I'm talking about people who really, really niche themselves on something. When you're working with these sorts of people, you should have something with you. And that is that it used to be the case that the specialist was the thing that people were looking for. Consult there are some consultancies even today that just kind of, they kind of pride themselves on just having really pointy, as they call them, specialists that you know, they're really good at one thing and that thing is the thing that they do and they do, they do absolutely nothing else. And that used to be a badge of pride. It used to be the case that that was something that you uh, that you strive towards to be really, really good at the one specific thing, because if you were more of a generalist, you were kind of wishy-washy and you were kind of, you know, not as skilled and, you know, usually you weren't perceived to be as much as an expert. And for a large corporation, having a specialist is something that is absolutely feasible because they have the money to be able to afford that. So quite a lot of companies, what they're looking for is, of course, someone who is extremely skilled in the tools that they are using. And what's interesting about this is this is not necessarily the same thing as just being really specialized in one thing. Just let me explain. You see, the company has a work policy and a work work practice, like they have a structure to themselves. And when they are doing work, depending on how, how they have structured their code and their stakeholders and like how the company, like how it functions from within, being a specialist can be a really, really good thing or it can be a really, really shitty thing, depending on what type of specialist you are. You see, some, some will claim like, okay, you might have a specialist that is extremely good at just I don't know, let's say web design as an example. You're an ex specialist in web design and then you come and you want to get a job at that company. Well, the problem with that might be that the, this company, although they have CSS and they're looking for someone who's really, really good with design and UI and so forth. Well, they don't really have the work structure to give you, the uh, as the web designer or whatever you are, the uh, other people like you they might not have a work process where all right so you have other team members that can weigh up the fact that you don't know how to do other things within front of such as i don't know javascript and some basic node or something like that that you need still need support you can't even though you are a specialist and they would hire you if they were in uh, were in a different situation they can't because you simply are too niched if that makes sense so being a specialist is it's a very tricky thing to state what that actually means and if it's a good thing or a bad thing because it depends on how niched you are and if you're going to find a place of work where they can accommodate that speciality that you have. Another example would be that say that you have a person who works with, I don't know, machine learning. That's a really popular thing. But the question is if, the, let's say for the sake of argument that that person is not all that great or they are really good with statistics and so forth, but they don't really code all that well. Well, unless the company can provide you with some other, like a coder or someone you can collaborate with so that you can actually produce some results, they still can't hire you. So usually when a company is ta saying that they want to hire a specialist or someone who is extremely good with something, they're not talking about just one little extremely niche thing. They're talking about someone who is extremely good and that's usually what they're looking for. Someone who is extremely good at all the tools or most at least the important things depending on how they slice things up because they might have a front-end team or a back-end team so forth. Just someone who really really knows the stuff that they will be working with within their company. 
that's what is usually a, the thing that bigger companies are looking for. They're looking for someone who is really, really good with exactly their tools. And let's be fair here, quite a lot of the small companies you know, are looking for that as well. But there is one, one thing that differs here at, at times. And that is that for a smaller company, usually depend once again it depends on the work structure it depends on how you have organized the the work that is happening in the company because in one company they might have a front-end team and a back-end team and in another team they are all just one big autonomous team and everybody kind of needs to take responsibility because everything is on fire all the time it's very hard to say which one they're going to prefer all like just across the board but in general bigger companies have the money to hire more, more people and get really good specialists in different areas so that they can actually like they can hire people that a smaller company would not really feel is worth investing in because they're in different stages of, um, of the company's lifespan right but generally uh, being a generalist is usually a thing that is very useful and smaller companies tend to hire people who are pretty good at a lot of things because and uh, you know don't think that big companies don't have this mindset either because it is extremely useful it's even more useful than having a specialist when it comes uh, when it comes to being flexible a specialist is in theory somebody who you just hire to do one specific thing or focus on very or very specific th specific thing but if you have a lot of unknowns in your company or if let's say you're working in a startup or something like that and you pretty much need just really dependable people that can kind of jump in and do the work because that's the thing about being a generalist that doesn't mean that you're bad at what you do that you don't know anything all that well and a specialist is the one that knows it really really well it just means that it, 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 that doesn't really matter. What matters is, can you do the job? Because if you have a specialist who only works with, say, CSS or frontend or something like that, and then you have a generalist who can still, who can do the frontend stuff to the skill level that is required for that role that they're going to fulfill, but they can do a bunch of other stuff as well, then well, that's the perfect person. Because the specialist, although they might be a master of it, you may not need that level of special, uh, like that level of skill to produce the results, but they are not going to be the person who jumps in and helps you with the operations related stuff for the back end and so forth. So it's a way off type of situation. But one thing that needs to be said, and that uh, which is, I think, extremely important to, to have with us here, is the value of culture fit. That is something that weighs up most of what I'm talking about here. No company is going to say that, oh, we're just looking for people who are specialists or we're looking for a generalist. That's not going to, it's not going to be stated on the CV. Nobody states that, oh, you're going to be, a, we need specialists or someone who kind of knows knows everything. They, all they're going to do is that they're going to list out all the tools and things that they have as a requirement and pretty much every company has the same requirements more or less. It depends on, like there is a range of course but you will hear the same requirements on social skills, you will hear the same requirements on technical skills and so forth and so forth. They're all asking for the same thing and when you get there what matters most is not necessarily that you are a master of one of these tools or if you are like super flexible and you can do all the things. What matters, that's one part of it. What matters most is that they feel like, oh, you're going to be able to survive in this environment and produce a lot of value for the company. And you are a nice person to work with. Because I can promise you this, if you are a super specialized to a developer who is a little bit tricky to work with it doesn't really matter like the the big company they might hire you but if you are up against a person who doesn't necessarily have the same level of technical skills that you do but they seem to like that person better and that person is more sociable and you know all of these other soft skills are in place for that person that's going to weigh very heavy you might actually lose the job even though you might have better skills because it's a balancing act between skill and like well between technical skills and social skills so what i want you to take away from this is that 
it's very hard to say if it's if bigger companies favor specialists versus generalists but just across the board they have more money than smaller companies and which means which means that they can hire more people so that they can actually afford hiring the best within a specific area but that doesn't mean that they just hire you know a, a person to do the CSS, a person to do the JavaScript, a person to do the HTML. They, there is a range. It all depends on how they structure their work within the company. So if they have a front-end team and a back-end team, they might afford themselves to buy really good front-end specialists and a really good back-end specialist, while in a smaller company they might just look for full-stack developers because they need someone to be able to do both because it's too costly to hire two teams to do one part of you know, the uh, one of each, uh, one of each of these, right? And lastly, make sure that you always remember that social graces and soft skills matter a lot, like a lot, a lot. Even if you are a super specialized person who know that specific company stack like the back of your hand, if they don't like you, if you do something that they feel like, oh, this person may not be fit in at this company they will not hire you because it's it, they, most of them at least very few people would pull in a person that causes problems in the social environment even if they're really really skilled if there's another person around the corner that sort of that can do the job and is very sociable and nice and they really enjoy working with that person because that is the and that's the key to all of this and that is that it doesn't really matter if you know if the requirements are here and your skill level is up here that's not as important as having someone who can actually meet the skill requirement but still is a very nice person it's kind of like uh, filling a glass it doesn't matter you want the glass to be filled to the brim because that's the requirement for that job it doesn't matter if it overflows if that person isn't a social person have a great day